video we're going to see how we can have a CJ2M PLC communicating to another device uh, over Ethernet IP using uh, implicit messaging. Um, so the first step we're going to show you uh, this is when let's say you don't have any hardware and you're going to build your network uh, schedule uh, offline and then for the purpose of this video uh, we're going to see also when we have the hardware and how we can do that so first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to grab my CJ to MEIP or my CGM to uh, PLC and for the purpose of this video, I'm going to have here uh, the FC280 VFD from uh, uh, Danfoss. So we added the two devices, uh, and we're going to see when we uh, go to the next uh, step uh, or the next uh, case where we do have hardware, uh, like we can see how we can do that as well. So once we have uh, our devices uh, on the network that we want to add, uh, on the Ethernet IP network, then we are going to see what's available in, uh, in this device in terms of connections and input outputs that we can connect to. So to do that, I'm going to right click on this device, go to properties, and then here I can see I have two tabs. Um, I'm interested in the second one. So I can see here I have one, two, three, four, five connections. So um, for us, we're just going to pick one connection, and then uh, the rest could be also established the same, uh, the same way. And you see here you have uh, for this one four byte outputs, uh, four bytes for inputs for this uh, connection, one fifty, one hundred. So let's use that as an example uh, to see how we can register our uh, connection. So now once we have, we know we have four bytes in and four bytes out, one way we can uh, basically link the two, I'm going to open up, double click on this, uh, on the PLC, and then the first thing I want to do is I want to create tag sets. Now as we saw previously, we have uh, four bytes for the in or consumed, and four bytes for outputs or produced uh, from this VFD. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create uh, under here edit tags. I'm going to say new, and I'm going to allocate uh, in the D area. Now that's just a preference. You could use also the W area, or you could use the CIO area. It depends uh, where you want to have the data coming. From the VFD and going back to the VFD. So for me, I'm just going to use uh, the D area. There's also um, other ways where you could actually use tag sets with names, and then under those tag sets, you can have uh, multiple uh, data areas if you want. So I'm not going to get into that. I'm just going to keep it simple for now, um, so we're not confused. So I'm just going to say D0, and I'm going to allocate four bytes. So that's two words. So register. So it automatically gives me 002 because 0 and D0 and D1 obviously has, has been used for those four bytes, which is two words. So for right now, I just need four bytes. I don't need any more than that. And I'm going to do the same thing in the produce or the outputs. Now keep in mind that we use 0 and 1, so we can start from 2, or we could use a different. Uh, Area. So, our different register numbers. So, I'm going to start from 10. Uh, that way, if I needed to add more in the D input, so I have some room to play with. Uh, so, let's say 4 again. So, that's mean I'm going to be using 10 and 11. And we'll see automatically here it starts from 12. So, that has been set. So, we'll say OK. It asks me if I want to register this tag set. I would say yes, because I want to use it. And then the next step, I'm going to go to connections, and then I'm going to register my connection. 
I put this down uh, and then double click on it. And then you can see here I have the available connections from what we saw previously in the VFD. So if I uh, want to pick a different connection, I can pick a different connection depending on what I want to do. If I pick this one, it's going to be 8 bytes, uh, in and out, and so forth. This one is 20 bytes, so it just depends how many data I want to read and write to, the, to that VFD. So for us, we're just going to keep that for 4 bytes. And then I'm going to link it to my data area where I created my text, uh, my text sets. So that's all good. Uh, the other thing that's also to keep in mind is the RPI. Now, if you know all we're doing is just one connection, then you don't have to worry about it. But if we're doing like multiple connection, it's not a bad practice to kind of uh, have an offset between the RPI, so we're not requesting the data at this exact same interval, uh, which will make you know the network more busier. So it's rather you can offset them by maybe 10, 20 milliseconds, uh, and so forth, just to give some room for your network to uh, to breathe. So for us, we just have one connection, so that's fine for me. And I'm going to say register. And once we've done this step, I see here what I register as connection right there. I'll say OK. And that's uh, up to now. We have registered our connections and everything is good. Now, if we do have the hardware and everything is connected, the next step after that is we want to connect to the network and we want to download to our devices so they can take the schedule. So the PLC originator can take the schedule and the same way as the VFD so he knows that there is somebody going to request uh, the data uh, on that schedule. Now for us we don't have uh, this, uh, this VFD but I do have other device we're going to be using to see how we can go uh, and complete the four uh, steps all the way down to downloading and we'll see how the communication is established and we will uh, trigger our input and output to see that live. So let's do that and uh, for that I'm going to first delete these devices just to show you when you have the, the devices, in my case I'm going to be talking to an NX IO uh, over Ethernet uh, IP. Uh, so when you do have the devices and everything is connected and the IP address is all set and, and communication is established, I can actually just read everything from the network, which is uh, nicer because I don't have to keep grabbing and dropping the things uh, in the network. Rather, I can just grab all that from the network. So first, I want to connect, and I'm going to use this as my uh, Ethernet connection from my computer. Let's say OK, and then you will see. Uh, automatically, it's kind of find my my PLC uh, in here, in here, and I can say uh, refresh. I will say OK, and then it says, "Do you want to use the existing network?" I'll say OK, and then after that, I want to upload from my network. So I'm going to say upload. It's asking me uh, that you know whatever existing I have, it's, it will be overwritten. So that's fine. I'll say yes. And now it found the two devices uh, I have on the network. So I'll say OK. So now it found my PLC, which is 192.168.254 and the NX uh, IO, which is uh, 192.168.250.3. So that's, uh, that's nice. I didn't have to drag anything. So the next step is I want to see is uh, how many inputs outputs I have to uh, share with uh, with this I/O. Now I skipped a step when you know configuring this uh, NX IOs. Uh, these uh, input and output sizes, where here I have four bytes for inputs and two bytes for uh, outputs. It just really depends on how many cards and modules you will have in your NX uh, IOs. So for my uh, purpose of this demo, I have uh, just two cards, one is an output and one is an input uh, card. So that's why I have only four bytes in and, four by and two bytes too. Uh, and I'm not going to get to that configuration uh, for, for the purpose of this uh, uh, video because that's not what really we want to focus on. Uh, 
maybe we will do that on a different video when we want to see how to uh, basically see where this number is coming from and down patient values. So that's good. So I know I need four for inputs and two for outputs. So I'll say OK. So again, the same uh, way we created those tag sets for the other when uh, we were doing the VFD will be the same thing. So I'll go to my edit tags and I'll say new. And again, I will use the same area which is D0 in my CJ uh, PLC. And I know I need four bytes. So I'll say register. And say close so I have four bytes in there and for the outputs I have I will need two bytes so I can use the uh, two and because I used the zero and the one already so I'll say register that's all I need and it's asking me if I want to register that I'll say yes and now again like we did before we're gonna to go to the connection to register that so drop uh, click on that to drop this in the register connections and then double click on it and then here you see I only have uh, input output I can do all the input only if I want just to read the inputs I'm not controlling the output for example from this PLC uh, or I can do listen only as well where I'm just uh, listening to the input I'm not requesting uh, the, the inputs or the styles of the inputs I'm just you know listening to the styluses so for me, I'm going to do both inputs and outputs because I want this PLC to uh, read the inputs from these IOs and also control the output uh, to, uh, to the same multi IOs. And here I'm going to say, put this here in this D0 area and in the same way for uh, my outputs. And then say register. So I say close and then I will say OK. And then the next step, step from that, I want to do a, a download to my schedule. So I can do it this way from these buttons. I have upload and then I have uh, download to the device. Um, or I can download to the network where it's going to download uh, uh, like the schedule to all the devices on the network. So I'm going to do this one so I don't have to download to both uh, separately. I'll say yes. It's giving me this one, so I'll say download with the current mode, which is right now the PLC is in run mode. So I'll say, say download with the current mode. It says it's successful. Um, and then after that, we can monitor what's uh, going on uh, in here. So it's, I see this is red, so that's not a good sign yet so I think it's just refreshing uh, there we go so now it's uh, green or sorry blue so that's good and connection is good and I can get see this text that it says it's okay okay so everything looks looks good to me uh, it's online and tagged as a link so it's, it's working everything looks, looks okay uh, in here so those are all uh, good signs. So now we're going to see uh, in the PLC if we are actually communicating as uh, the network configurator, configurator is telling us that everything is, is working fine. So I'm going to bring CX programmer and I'm going to go online with uh, my PLC. So I'm connecting it over uh, Ethernet IP. My IP address, like we said, it's 192.68.254. So connect. Um, it's telling me. Oh, sorry. I have to pick Ethernet IP. Obviously. And I say yes. So now I'm going online with uh, the PLC. And this transfer successful is good I'm just gonna bring uh, my watch window so we can interact with those uh, areas so we know from uh, here that we allocated the input to area D0 and we have four bytes uh, for that and the output is allocated to D 
two and we have two bytes for that. So if I go back to my CX programmer and then I bring uh, D0 and sorry I want to bring the I want to bring the whole um, the whole channel not just uh, not just a bit it's just so we can see all the bits okay. so I have here and then I'll bring also D1 so in here we have uh, I'm just going to trigger input number 0 and as we see we can see that has been triggered uh, in the second word in there so we have those allocated to our um, first uh, input. Now the reason, the reason for this, um, like I said, I skipped that that uh, step for the NX IO setting and all that. Um, the reason it's allocated to the second word and uh, this first byte, um, if we saw, if we see, you know, in the Sysmax Studio and the settings. Uh, you're gonna see that this one is allocated the stances and all that for the for the coupler, and then this byte here is allocated to the to the inputs. And we can also trigger the last input here, as we can see that's input number eight. So that's working good. And then for our outputs, which is the two, um, I can let's put this to one set the value and I can see in my card that output uh, 1 is indeed uh, turned uh, on. I can move it to 2 and I can see the next output is on and so forth. So um, that's basically how you can have a CJ2M uh, uh, PLC communicating uh, with uh, another device over Ethernet IP using implicit uh, messaging. So hopefully you enjoyed the video and uh, thank you very much for watching.